Our guests tonight include the entrepreneurs Katia Beecham, Britt Morin, and Nadia Bujarwa. Fundraising. Is it more difficult for women? The cards are stacked against female founders. Um, I believe the stat is currently that 93% of VCs are men. Um, and I think, you know, it would be uh, irrational to assume that that is a bias that doesn't impact decision making. For us, you know, my co-founder and I, neither of us were in technology, neither of us were in beauty. And I cold emailed every CEO of the beauty industry that you can imagine. We started my cold emailing hobby with Steve Jobs that got back to me right before I went to business school. Really? And it worked. It worked. Um, the, you know, my recipe for cold emailing is as follows. Very compelling subject line. <laughs> an email that you can read without scrolling on an, a device, right, a smartphone and um, no business plan attached. So we have like a one pager attached to dive in more. And then you ask for something that's pretty hard to say no to, which in our case wasn't, will you participate in Birchbox and give us free samples? It was, can you have five minutes to give me advice? What yeah, kind of assumptions do, I think, do people make that about women and female entrepreneurs that they don't make about men? I think women are, um, they are more realistic when it comes to what they're going to achieve and how they're going to achieve it. Um, a lot of men carry bigger egos, um, so their you know their three-year plan might look totally insane, but they're they sound as if they fully believe it. And women are again going to be a little bit more realistic in that approach. As you build and scale a very massive business, we're in six countries, we have four million active customers. Um, you know this is when your actual audaciousness as a woman, I think, comes more into question than it does for men. I actually find that as you get more and more bold and further down, there's skepticism about whether you are grounded enough versus for a man, I think it's seen much more as like visionary forever. My question is, how do you guys continuously get data to make sure that you are not only having a good product, but that you're constantly creating new products that your customer will, be, will need? I think that you have to be very specific about how you interact with customers because if you simply ask a customer what they want, they're unlikely to actually tell you the business that you should build. Um, and so really being very specific about understanding what motivations you're trying to unearth and what that means about how you should be uh, serving a customer I think is probably one of the most important things that we learned. Never ask your customer what they want. Try to listen to for what they're feeling or what they're saying they're looking for. Uh, the worst advice that you've ever gotten regarding your business. Why didn't you start this with your husband? I said I'm confident enough to do this myself and in fact he knows nothing about media. Um, anybody who's giving us advice on our customer who has no business giving us advice on our customer, which is the vast majority of people who choose to give us advice. <laughs> um, but you know, I think we, we work with a customer that has, uh, there are all kinds of preconceived notions around who this woman is. And the truth is that politely declining advice is a critical skill as a founder. How do you say it? How do you do it? Um, thank you for your thoughts. <laughs>